Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning March 28th, 2022. Although you could treat this as timeless. Now I do have several announcements for new things coming up. Here in the beginning, I'm gonna be talking for a couple of minutes. I know some of you get super impatient. If you wanna be that person who puts the timestamp and says the real reading starts here, that's fine. I'm gonna make it real easy for you. When I'm done with all the announcements, I'm gonna make some sort of like frozen something here in the camera, that way you can just scrub right through. But if you are going to be that person and put the timestamp in the comments, I only ask that you also put your astrological sign. I'm just curious. So the first announcement is that we are having another live event on Bright. It's gonna be April 11th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and this is going to be on soul contracts. So we are gonna be looking at the personal oversoul, your lifetimes, timelines, and also what your soul is trying to learn, your purpose. So there are limited seats, so make sure that you use the link down below to secure your ticket, tell your friends, and let's have a beautiful event. You don't have to be uh, on camera if you don't wanna be. I know some of you may have decided not to get a ticket because you thought your face had to be on this event. It doesn't have to be. You can still just comment behind the scenes if you want, and I will see it. Or if you do come on and turn on your camera, I can bring you on stage, we can have a live Q&A, we can engage, it's really cool. And I always love seeing your guys' faces, so consider that. The other new thing that I am doing is I want to start making more use of the Patreon platform. So for a $1 a month subscription, you will have access to extra readings, extra bonus content over at Patreon. So again, it's just a dollar, so use that link down below. The other announcement is that I am still running ahead of schedule on personal readings. For the moment, I am staying on top of those. If you want an Akashic Records reading where we look at your timelines and give you some insight on what you're supposed to be learning in this timeline, we can do that or we can do an angelic message reading, angelsouls444.com. The final announcement is probably a little preemptive. I probably shouldn't be announcing this just yet because I'm not sure if it's gonna work out. But recently I have been becoming more aware that something keeps stopping me when it comes to the publishing process. Now, if you guys have been following me, you know that I worked for a very large publishing company for years. And I've also been a writer. I've been, I mean, the first book I actually tried to work on was when I was 13 years old. <laughs> so I, for that many years, I've been saying, I'm working on a book, I'm working on a book. But when it comes to the publishing process, I always get stuck. And I really had to get honest. What is it about that that makes me kind of back away from it? And then I realized, you know, being published isn't my goal <laughs> as a writer. And I know for a lot of people who do write, that is just an absolutely insane thing to say because that's how you make it. That's how you make money off your writing. Uh, but the reason why I write is not because I actually like writing. Actually, it's very tedious. Uh, it sucks up your life. It <laughs> exhausts you. Uh, it can work on your self-esteem, you know, all those things. I enjoy connection. I mean, I love connection through storytelling. It's the same reason why I love art, some art. Uh, <laughs> refer back to a couple of weeks ago, my comments on that, but that's why I love music. I love not only how the storytelling, whatever form it's taking, um, how powerful that can be in evoking some bit of emotion in someone, but it's the connection with the reader to me. So that led me down a road of, okay, then what's really important here? And again, all I want is a cozy little corner where I can be happy and, and do my storytelling and have connection with people. So I'm exploring platforms. <laughs> you know how they say there's a thin line between genius and crazy? I'm not really sure which side I fall on just yet. This might be the worst thing I've ever done, but I'll tell you what. It's like walking a tightrope and the wind's blowing, okay? So I'm not really sure how this is gonna go, but I am exploring Substack for one. So if that works out, I might do like a newsletter and I may, chapter by chapter, put my book on there so that the audience can read as I'm going through the process. At this point, the book that I'm thinking of, that would be through the rewrite process. Here's what you would need to understand about that. I will not be hiring an editor, okay? I've done that in the past, it did not go well. The person didn't even edit my book and took thousands of dollars. So, you know, there's a lot of things here 
where I've hit an obstacle and I'm just backing away from that. So it's not going to be edited. <laughs> I know this is the nail biter part of it. So what you're going to be seeing is a book in process before it has, again, been seen by any editor. So no developmental editing, no copy editing, no proofreading. And, you know, you're going to be seeing it before any marketing teams get to it or that sort of thing, okay? So you do have to have a little patience if you're going to read that because it's going to be raw content. There will be mistakes. The sentences might be a little clunky because you, when you're writing it, you get numb to what's there, right? When I edit somebody else's stuff, I'm the fresh pair of eyes. I'm not that, <laughs> I'm not that invested from like the writer's standpoint. I can come from the outside and, and see it in a different way. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna be doing that. Just again, be ready. Some of the storyline might not match up, I get it. Um, but I'm using this, uh, I'm gonna do this I think as an experiment to see if this does get me more connected to the reader. And what will that look like if you're on that journey with me? Uh, this is not, I wanna make this very clear. This is not so that armchair experts, you know, people who have never written a book themselves, they, even if you are a professional editor, this isn't that kind of thing where, oh, I caught all your mistakes. Oh, I caught all, that's not what this is about. This is about, I'm, I'm doing my art. I wanna share it to have connection with my audience, okay? To me, it's not about being perfect. It's about being authentic. So let's see how that goes. I may chicken out. I may put one chapter up and be like, what the heck was I thinking <laughs> and yank it back down? I have no idea. But regardless, I wanna get the newsletter going again, getting a blog going. So I'll keep you posted. You know, platforms like Substack, I need to look at sales tax uh, because I mean, there, there are, you know, the practical things behind this. Pretty soon Colorado, even on digital products, is going to a destination sales tax model. And so if you're a worldwide business, how the heck do you handle that, right? So it's, it's just some things that I gotta work out. I wanted to pass that by you guys, just kind of give you a base of what I'm working on and we'll see how it goes, all right? Again, I'm not guaranteeing that this is gonna be the best idea, but I wanna see. I wanna see if this, if this works out. So, okay, so for all the impatient people who wanted to skip ahead, I don't know, I gotta do some like, like frozen. Here it is, impatient people. This is where you put the timestamp. <laughs> like this, okay? Hello, impatient people. Welcome to the reading. I want you to know that you missed a lot of announcement stuff. There are people who are watching this reading who know more now than you do. So let's get on to it. <laughs> so for this week, and again, you can treat this as timeless, but explosive news, explosive news. Now I don't, I hope this doesn't turn out so that it's like bad, but uh, it feels more This feels like it's somebody who's very much in the public eye in one way or another. Something happens to them. It has this push-pull feeling of like, oh gosh, we feel so bad that that happened to that person, but you know, they were only on their way to being reformed. They weren't completely reformed yet. Does this make any sense? It doesn't, I know. I'm like, I always ask that like, it doesn't make sense, but <laughs> not yet at least. Uh, but there are going to be things that are revealed. So what it is, is it feels like it might happen to someone, a public figure, and we think that they're a victim, but then we realize there's more to the story. There's, there's a reason maybe why, God forbid, that happened to them, okay? So we'll have to see. For others of us, this can be a real release. We get the information that has been hidden from us, and I don't mean that in a grand way. I mean that in your personal life. Like, you learn the truth of someone. You learn that, you know, maybe you always told yourself the story that, oh, my family would do anything for me. And then when you're hurting, they let you down. And then you start to see there's some real flaws in our family dynamic, or maybe you're the family member that needs to set a boundary with someone, you know, that sort of thing. But something, something opens up and comes up to the surface, okay. So we have peace, here we go. This is transformation. Archangel Osriel, release the past. There is a more enriching future coming. Let go and let God. 
Again, it feels like there are things way out of our control going on here. Something gets revealed, um, something, something blows open. And I cannot lay it down any better than saying we think someone is the victim of something and it turns out maybe they're the perpetrator or we start putting our foot down to things and say, no, this needs to transform and now. Ooh, uh, given all the stuff that's going on in the world, I immediately, you know, I'm thinking like economy, of course the economy is going to be rocking and rolling. Um, people are just getting fed up with having, it, it's, it's getting harder and harder to just survive. That's what it feels like. And people might be exploring a new way of living. We might find people, <laughs> I'm hearing heading for the hills. Heading for the hills. Uh, but that feels more like I'm sick of society. <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily have to mean like people are evacuating or anything like that. But it's just like I, I'm sick of the drama. We're waking up. And that's not, you know, that's not a bad thing. We're waking up and realizing that chaos is not, chaos doesn't equate to excitement. Except maybe for a psychopath or a sociopath or something like that. And we realize that we've been modeling our lives after really bad examples. And I think there's some course correction that is occurring here. Okay, so we have the lovers. Now, this is Archangel Raphael. Archangel Raphael is all about healing. And the lovers, obviously, you could take that quite literally that there could be a love partner or uh, you're leaning on someone. But again, the, it's kind of interesting. The whole beginning, I was given that announcement about the reason why I choose to do storytelling through writing is because I want to have a connection with an audience. Like I, I like connecting with other humans in an authentic way. And I think that's what this does. There's a healing of the connection in society. This isn't gonna happen overnight, okay? <laughs> but there is some bit of realization, like um, bring love into the situation. But as we say that, here, here oh God, listen to me, I got my scolding mommy tone on. Did you hear that? Came right out. Um, <laughs> what we often do with that is that's where we get, you know, your covert narcissist with their toxic positivity, trying to make you feel bad for having real emotions. Um, people who are spiritually sidestepping and, and just avoiding and therefore thinking they've got life right. That's not it either. Uh, this isn't, or, or being, um, what, what's the word? Enabler. Wow, that took me a minute to, to, how many of you were screaming at your computer screens or your phones going, it's enabler, um, <laughs> or being an enabler. Like this is what we have to, we have to stop doing that. We have to stop doing that. Enablers are becoming a bigger problem than some of the really, really toxic people uh, because they're putting down people who are trying to help release the past to make change. Um, and it gets tricky because again, people can pose. So with this Osriel, this peace card with Archangel Osriel, we're trying to transform. And then you have people jumping on this because it's their opportunity to shine, to get attention. And so they're just, you know, they might be guilty of doing things themselves, but they're out there being the, you know, there's such a thing as a social narcissist, for example, you know, just trying to be out there, communal narcissist. Like, look at me, look how good I am. I do everything for the camera. But as soon as the camera's off, I don't care about anybody. And the enablers only see what they want to see on the surface and say, no, they're a good person. So I'm going to support them. Watch out. Uh, the, uh, that, that, that's going to, I hope, <laughs> I hope it's not too hard on you because something breaks open and falls apart. So be ready for that. Okay. So we have here, make choices from your heart, deeply emotional commitments, the power of love. Again, you know, this might be people saying, hey, you know what? I'm with you on that. You know what? I'm tired of people victimizing themselves too and then making everybody else feel like terrible people and I'm with you on this. And I'm not saying bond over uh, an outdated perspective or anything like that. Again, what is the root of the issue? What is really going on here? That is about trying to get people to look past a narrative. We have to get better. Like I wanna start studying body language I want to start studying this, uh, like interrogation people. I admire that so much because it really, oh, the insight into human behavior. There are things 
where you know you'll see somebody out there whining and crying but it, I guess if you know if you're like an interrogator and you know what to look for you realize no this is someone who's probably a person of interest <laughs> right so but that I think that's a perfect example of what we do on a societal level it's so much is lost on us that we don't see where the real danger is we don't see who the real perpetrators are this has been going on for a very long time and so we don't know uh that we're getting th that we're being controlled that we're being thrown into a situation that doesn't have to be that that's a big takeaway ace of gabriel creating a whole new beginning here a gift of passion opportunity and inspiration the chance to do something amazing a sense of wonder so we can change this we can make this a very different thing now we do have the lovers and the ace of gabriel which is the ace of wands that could be uh, for some of you a new love partner that where there's a beautiful connection very passionate you know take that as you will this is a general reading <laughs> again if you want a private reading angelsouls444.com all right guys the next one seven of ariel so this is the be patient card okay <laughs> you have invested wisely have patience and wait for the harvest review your progress and make plans for your next endeavor again i think we're really tearing down the old way the new way is not ready to come forward yet but we have support and gabriel's all about in my mind the sacral chakra which is all about manifesting a new way a new chapter and this is saying this is the time to plant new seeds now this isn't so that you take advantage of people and try to like get smarter about the manipulation without becoming um you know defensive or paranoid or any of those things balance balance it and certainly if you point out something that nobody else seems to see it doesn't automatically mean that you're right but nobody should be diminishing <laughs> your perspective if you have like an insight about something and just because somebody doesn't want to hear it they shut you down or worse they try to like turn some abuse around on you pay attention to that that's another one that's another layer of this message how many of us don't even see abuse or understand abuse when it's happening it's very hard when you're in it for sure it's very hard when you're outside of it and you're witnessing it and trying to help right but there's something it feels like that's another kind of mass awakening moment where everybody kind of wakes up and says okay why are we doing this why are we not I don't know, I'm thinking of the example of like parents who, you know darn well, they're not showing up for their kids. It's tricky because things could look one way on the outside. Maybe that's not exactly what's going on. And yet if you feel like you're not doing something, you see what I'm getting at here? There's something around, uh, you know, I, if I do it, it's bad. If I don't do it, it's bad. But there's something that cracks open and wakes up and there's a light that comes through and the clarity starts to hit the people who need it the most so that they can help themselves okay so i guess the message here is help is on the way it may not just happen in this week that's why i say these are actually timeless um but but be ready for change for sure get yourself ready for change yeah we're working towards harmony we're not going to take it anymore we're not going to you know we're not going to allow ourselves to be stressed or scared Again, you know, I'm getting the, the message here that it's just as bad to rebel because that's not helpful. Uh, for us humans hearing that, that's maybe a weird thing to hear, but all it does is create more lower frequency. It's about harmony. It's about talking it out. You know, do your peaceful whatever, but make sure it remains peaceful. And then we have compassion. Something breaks open our compassion. We know we have to stand together we have to be there for one another and having more compassion for ourselves because this is not going to be easy you notice me even just saying this there's so many uh pieces to it so many levels you know soul level messages that we do here we don't do shallow readings i don't do hook readings okay where i get you feeling empowered so you have to come see me every week no this is about empowering you so no, it's not going to be cut and dry. No, you can't just blink and everything's done. No, this is not what we came here for. That's not what this audience is built for. This is a different kind of audience here. You came here 
to stop the madness to make the change. And every single one of us have made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. Maybe you're one of the people that get out in the street and start screaming your head off. Maybe you're one of the people who made a human chain across a freeway. Don't do that. Don't do that. I want us to get our point across. It's not worth endangering your life. And by the way, I was on I-70 West when there was one of those human chains across and it was just forming when we came up. So we were going pretty fast and all of us had to slam on our brakes because random people were walking out onto the interstate. And the entire time I was stuck there, I kept looking in my rear view mirror and seeing people flying up, semis flying up. And the chances were pretty darn good they weren't gonna see us. Thank God nothing happened, but take care of yourselves and think of others, okay? You can get your point across in other ways. Brown, establish boundaries, the number's 12. That's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'll get the comments. How dare, I know what protest you're talking about, and how dare you, we're making change. No, you tell yourself that story. There are other ways to do it. Do not endanger yourselves, and do not endanger others, okay? Set the boundaries. Now, look at this. This goes hand in hand. First of all, this is Archangel Sandalfin energy, and Sandalfin's all about uh, sound frequency, music, attunement, right? And uh, this is earth and something new is growing. And here we have the seven of Ariel where there is sort of tending to the garden. So change is coming, but we need to be proactive and we're going to have to adjust our approach. Now, I'm not saying that if you've ever done that, that you're bad. It was part of our learning process. I think, you know, if I had never been on that interstate and I heard on the news that someone was protesting that way, I'd be like, that's one way to get your point across. I'd be like, yeah, but I was in it. And I saw how dangerous it was, not just for the protesters, but for me and everybody was sitting there. And it was scary, very scary. And it made my heart ache because I'm like, people are just gonna shut down and we're not gonna get our message across. Again, the idea here is to open up to one another in a pure way, not in a way of, I want to be the one who's in charge. I want to leave my legacy for being the one that stood up against. At some point it becomes self-righteous and it, you know, not protest necessarily, but I'm just saying um, how we interact in day-to-day -day life. Um, trying to correct this pain, trying to heal, <laughs> correct this pain, trying to heal this pain and course correct um, is hard. It's going to cause some distortion in us. And so there's going to be distortion playing off of one another. We also can't overcorrect and be like, I'm just always peaceful and I just accept whatever anybody does. I have an excuse for everything because that's peaceful. You know what? Get away. Stop. I ain't in no kind of mood. <laughs> like, stop. That's been going on for so many freaking years. I can't even. Ugh, listen. All right. Anyway, before I get myself into more trouble. <laughs> We're going to leave it there. I'm going to record uh, something for the Patreon supporters. So again, just a dollar is all the pledge needs to be and you get access to it. Check out that live event on Bright, April 11th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. We're going to be talking soul contracts. So sending you all so much love and take care.